going to back up a little bit in Mark's gospel. Jesus, the 12 disciples, and their followers are on a journey to Jerusalem. Jesus is leading them out in front, and he hears murmuring and whispering and conversation behind him that centers around how great he is, how excellent he is, the miracles that he's performed. So Jesus takes the 12 disciples aside and tells them for the third time the prediction of his passion. And when he pulls the disciples together, they would be like right in these first two pews. And he says to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes. And they will condemn him to death and hand him over to the Gentiles, who will mock him, spit upon him, scourge him, and put him to death but after three days he will rise. As soon as he's finished, the brothers James and John, sons of Zebedee, stand up, separate from the other disciples, and immediately approach Jesus. And they have a bold request. They want to secure the number one and number two spots when Jesus comes in his glory. That's quite a daring ask, isn't it? You might think they're about to get a tough lesson in humility but they don't. Jesus doesn't sharply rebuke them. Instead, he gently leads them to a deeper truth. Jesus says, you do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? To drink someone's cup means to share in their fate. The verb tense for drink in this context may suggest that Jesus is already in the process of facing his suffering, as if it's unfolding in the present. It could also refer to a future event that is so certain it's spoken of as if it's already happening. In the Old Testament, the cup of God's wrath is often used as a powerful metaphor for God's judgment upon humanity for their rebellion. This is a very clear and easy message for the brothers to understand. In the culture of their time, baptism may be used as a metaphor for being overwhelmed or, for, or fully immersed in an experience. Much like our phrase of today, baptized by fire, where we begin a task immediately that has a lot of stress upon it with no prior experience. Again, it's another clear message to the brothers. Jesus is asking them, are you really ready to follow me all the way to the cross? Do you truly understand what it means to share in my glory? Without hesitation, the sons of thunder reply, we can. Again, Jesus does not scold them. Instead, he affirms them that they will indeed share in his cup and in his baptism. Jesus also makes it clear that the seats of honor in the kingdom of God are not his to grant. Now imagine the remaining 10 disciples when they see and hear what the brothers have done. They're indignant, that is, they're angry at the brothers, perhaps because they feel left out, or maybe because they too crave a position of honor in Jesus' kingdom. Jesus seizes the moment to teach them and us an essential lesson about what it means to be truly great in God's eyes. Jesus contrasts the power-hungry ways of earthly rulers with the path of his followers. In the worldview, rul rulers dominate. The great ones make their authority felt. But in Jesus' view, greatness is about service. Greatness is not about wielding power, but about humility, service, and self-sacrifice. Jesus cuts to the heart of his message, in his kingdom, greatness is measured by how much we serve others 
especially those in need. The higher we want to rise, the lower we must stoop to help others. If we want to be first, we must be willing to be last. Jesus reinforces this by referring to himself in the language of the suffering servant from Isaiah, as we heard in today's first reading. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Our tendency to seek recognition and self-promotion is a part of our human nature. But Jesus, through his life and ministry, teaches us that discipleship is not about seeking honor. It's about serving others. How often do we seek recognition, status, or honor? How often do we desire to be served rather than to serve? Jesus challenges us to ask, are we truly willing to follow him on the path of humility, even when it leads to the cross, when the need is difficult or the circumstances are hard? This call to service isn't just for a few, it's for all of us, in our families, our schools, our workplaces, and our communities. We are called to serve, to put the needs of others before our own, and to give ourselves for the sake of others. As we continue with Mass today, let's utilize the moments in silence to ask the Lord for the grace we need to follow him more closely, to drink from the cup of self-sacrifice, and to embrace the baptism of humility. In doing so, we follow Christ's example, who came not to be served, but to serve, and who gave his life as a ransom for all.